Mate, a really big night at the Italian Club. I've emceed a few events there. It's a great venue. And, mate, before we get to the big uh, world title, I understand that uh, there was some great Indigenous pride out there uh, this evening or yesterday evening. Yes, yeah, that's right. There was um, the top three indig- Indigenous uh, boxing prospects in Australia all on the same car for the first wow. time. That was uh, Nathaniel May, Nathaniel Cheeky May, uh-huh. uh, brilliant Brandon Ogilvy, and uh, Paul Showtime Fleming, who's a real good prospect and been out of the ring for 18 months and it was uh, basically his ring return. Oh, that's great. Are you, do you remember, are you old enough to remember Baby Cassius and Tony Jones and mm. all of them? Yeah, I know of them. And Eugene Eads, <laughs> all the boys. Yeah. Hi to all the guys. Uh, they were Mordich blokes. I Before my you. time, but yeah, they were, they were very good. Oh, mate. And they really represented. And as uh, I told people, uh, tonight, Saturday night, we have uh, one of Australia's Indigenous stars, Bruce the Preacher McPhee, the world title holder in uh, WKA Muay Thai kickboxing, coming all the way over to Perth where he's got some fans taking on our own Adam Bailey, mate. So it's way to represent. Yeah. But, mate, that big fight, the women's IBA uh, contest between the Sydney girl and our own lady, tell us about the build-up first. Yes, uh, obviously this was a huge fight, arguably the biggest uh, Australian women's boxing fight in history. So, I've got to point out to people, too, the women's IBA is probably the most credible world title uh, on the planet. Yes, considered as well-respected, so uh, it was a huge fight. So Perth's Erin uh, Blueprint McGowan, our own... Uh, her own girl was uh, facing Arlene Angafis Blenko, uh, yes, for that vacant belt. And uh, we're pleased to announce that Erin won that belt. Oh, great. So, uh, cool. Said, great, fantastic performance. Oh, Wasn't magic. without a bit of controversy. Uh, probably more outside the ring, but uh, yeah. I'll tell you exactly what happened. Um, during the fight that uh, Aaron got off to a very good start, um, scored a flash knockdown in the first round, near the end of the first round, and obviously won that round 10-8. And then um, probably used her speed and uh, to sort of get in and out, good movement, and sort of control the fight uh, and win probably uh, quite comfortably. 99-92, 98-92, and 98-91. So, but the thing is that Blenko looked very dangerous. She was obviously the bigger and the stronger girl, so, you know, Aaron boxed smart and stayed away from the power as much as possible, but would have been, you know, a tragedy if Aaron lost that fight or got caught because... What I found really unprofessional is that Blenko missed the weight. Really? That's one of the worst things you can do as a fighter. Yeah, it shows no respect for the opponent or the sport. It's unprofessional and uh, and it wasn't good. But it wasn't the fact that she just missed the weight. She missed the weight for a long, long way. And Erin McGowan trained so hard and wanted this second world title to fight in front of her home fan. Yeah. She was going to take the fight if she was a heavyweight. But uh, so... You know, again, it was no no respect. I've seen you know fighters get kicked out of the UFC house for mis- yeah. by Dana White for missing weight. So that's how you know you got to understand how important that is to do that. So uh, again, weight limits are there in place to make it a level playing field and a fair fight. So to give you an idea, Aaron weighed in at sixty point four kilos. Mm-hmm. Perry Kale, the ring announcer, announced that. Uh, that uh, Arlene weighed in at 62 kilos. And I was sitting with Neil Deavy from the West at the time. We looked at each other and thinking, mm-hmm. this girl weighs more than that. I think Perry, he was uh, trying to bring it a bit closer. But two kilos is still way over or not even close to what she should be weighing for this world title fight. It's a world title fight. Yeah. So it wasn't like a normal fight either. So uh, all credit for Erin McGowan for, one, taking the fight. Yeah. It was, again... Some credit has got to go to Blenko and the fact that it made it a tough fight. It was an entertaining fight. But, again, the weight issue, I can't get over. You know, it's My like goodness. it's unprofessional. And, uh, Mate, tell us about the promoters and can people, if they're interested, get some video and where can they find pics? What are some of the site, websites they can go to? Well, CDL Boxing Promotions, uh, Ty Coleman, the promoter, and also his partner in crime, uh, Dave Letizia, do a fantastic job with these cards. Again, we had, again, the three top Indigenous prospects, uh, in Australia on the same card for the first time tonight. A couple of good undercards as well with a huge one-punch knockout. Wow. Uh, so it was a really good night. But uh, CDL Boxing Promotions got logged in on their side and liked them on Facebook. But they, they do a good job for Perth Boxing as well. So you know. if they just Google CDL Boxing, they'll find one of the uh, outlets for sure, hey? Yeah, and, and Ty actually got in the ring tonight made a special announcement because their next card, which is on Friday the 13th of February, 
Uh, Dave Letizia is still fighting, but wow. he'll be his farewell fight, his retirement fight. And he's going to be fighting a guy that you know very well, Rob Powdrill. Really? Oh, man, so, that's huge. Very tough fight. So, uh, obviously, Dave's going to put everything into it. And, of course, wow. as we know, P- Rob Powdrill only last, well, just over two weeks ago, actually, took a fight on one week's notice Jeez. against, and it was a huge, huge underdog, considered to be one of the biggest upsets of all time, and yeah. knocked out Damien Hooper, Damien Super <laughs> Hooper, in uh, probably about 25 seconds. <laughs> so, wow. huge upset. Mate, we've got about uh, two or three minutes to go. And I, before we uh, wrap up, I just wanted to uh, get your reaction, mate. Uh, our Aussie boy in the UFC up against uh, Mr. Val Doom, that was a gallant performance and uh, he took a, a pretty tough knee to the head that finished his bid to be uh, the first Aussie champ. I was so gutted. I was watching oh, this fight at, uh, at the Burswood with uh, Soul of the Hulk Pulele. Wow. And uh, we were gutted because Mark Hunt did everything right in that fight. He won the first round uh, convincingly. He was, yep. you know, knocked him down a few he times during the fight. He he? looked so dangerous, oh. put him down in the second, but... One mistake cost he him the fight. He just went in and at the Got wrong caught. time and, and that's uh, all it Fabrizio takes. Veldum saw him come in and did a jump knee. Oh, I was so gutted over it. So, But uh, Mark Hunter will be back. He's one of the most He's popular. He's such a powerful you know, striker. Uh, he, will be, he will be back. And um, Stephen, you're listening in there. Do you follow the UFC at all? Um, oh, it's hard for me because I don't have pay-per-view TV, so I've just got normal TV, so... Oh, mate, f- uh, f- forget the fruit and vegetables, get UFC. <laughs> well, uh, that's what I tell my wife and then she hits me. Um, actually, uh, you'll have to make sure that if you um, get Erin in the studios, give her a good pat on the back, say thanks from WA, you've yeah. done a great job. So, I spoke uh, to Erin uh, yeah. to to straight after the fight and <laughs> she told me, I need to get a girly job now. <laughs> oh, bless her. So, but she's, she's a fighter. She'll probably want to defend her belt. But uh, she worked so hard for this belt, so Perth is very proud of her, and she, it was well-deserved, And especially what she was up against. She wasn't just up against uh, some a, a strong opponent. She was up against an st- opponent that looked two weight classes above what she should have been fighting. Wow. Maybe she was a little bit like Danny Green was after that <laughs> fight in Canada, didn't know if he'd won or lost. <laughs> Did you see that fight, Stephen? Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't. Um, there was, was a challenge stadium against Sean Sullivan. Was that he? Oh. I thought there was one in Canada where he. No, did no, he, he beat Eric Luca in uh, in Canada very yeah. convincingly in six rounds. But uh, but Danny Green dominated. Uh, you know, Sean Sullivan here at the challenge stadium. It lost so much weight. Wow. Uh, didn't realise he won. <laughs> wow. Mate, looking forward to uh, speaking to you again. Uh, thanks for keeping us up to date with martial arts and all the best to the guys, the promoters, whose name to Google is CDL. CDL Boxing Promotions. Well done to Ty Coleman and Dave Letizia on another great night. And, Stephen, thank you so much for being part of the program, mate. I hope I speak to you again soon. Okay, no problem. Yeah, all the time. best. Cheers, mate. And, gentlemen, thank you very much. Back to your corners because we've got news coming up after that.